Your parents did not want you to be a teacher, yet you have turned out to teach the whole world, Maggie. <laughs> yes, that's funny, isn't it? Sometimes, um, sometimes that happens when it's a natural thing, it's going to happen anyhow. I just love it. Heavens above, I, I need a hug. Oh. I think the really important thing is you've got to follow what you like. You have to learn to know what inspires you or excites you and makes you happy. And if you can pursue that and follow that, then that will take you on a journey. Surround yourself with good people because it's the people around you that will help you in life and you'll also help them. So it's really important how you select your friends. It's really important how you select the people that are helping you in your dream. It's really, really important. Do it because you love doing it and don't do it for any other reason. If someone wants you to do it or you think you're gonna be famous, you know, it doesn't work. It's too damn hard. Do it because you love it and uh, things come easy, a lot easier to you. My advice is to just do it. If you're passionate about something, just go and do it. The only thing that's stopping you is you. So, how was that for your tour of Lot 14? Really fun. I say thanks for coming, Isabella. I had a great time too, talking to you. Thank you. How was it meeting Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple? It was pretty crazy. It was pretty surreal. Uh, I know there's, there's a video of it, um, and you just see my head kind of whip around because he, he does that every year. He meets with, you know, 10 or so students. I guess it's just the question being asked to be able to say the thing that they're passionate about, whether that's fixing cars or working with wood or telling a story or catching a ball or, you know, designing a beautiful picture. Like it could be, it could be anything at all. I still find acting really scary. I think it's probably because I'm scared of it, but I love it. Have all the challenges that you have faced thus far in following your dreams been worthwhile? Absolutely, I think they've been sometimes more important than the successes. I think that they're the time you really grow a lot. You learn a lot from the failures <laughs> or the bits that don't go right. What I've learned is that you need to be exposed to a lot of things. You need to try many, many things in your life. It doesn't matter what it is, okay? One day you will try something and it will feel right. You will feel like, oh wow, I was born for this. I was born to make a difference in this. At that point in time, you have to go for it. Wonderful to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. My pleasure. Thank you for asking. You're an Australian business entrepreneur and group CEO, managing director of Domino's Pizza Enterprises. And does CEO stand for Chief Enthusiasm Officer? It does. <laughs> so officially people would call it the Chief Executive Officer. So in other words, the top executive of the company before yeah. the board. We employ tens of thousands of people all over the world, so my job's to bring the enthusiasm and the energy to the business. If we can start by going back to your early life. I love my childhood. I have really, really good memories. I'm a really proud Queenslander. I'm a really proud Australian. And um, I think by living in Papua New Guinea for five years, it helped give me a more global view of the world because the primary school I went to was an international primary school. What did you dream to become when you were my age? I didn't really know when I was really, really young. A few years, when I was a few years older than you, I wanted to be a policeman. And then I wanted to be a school teacher. I really loved art. And so I, became, I studied to be an art and a social science economics teacher. Um, and then I didn't finish my degree because I started in the pizza business. Inside me, there was always this desire to want to go and create things and build things. And so that's why I, I didn't end up teaching. 
as a school teacher that is. As I said, I still teach today, but in a different way. And I delivered pizzas for two years while I was at university or college back then. I feel that I'm a dreamer and a builder because a lot of people are builders in life that build things. And then there's dreamers and they need builders to help them build their dreams. In my case, I feel like as an entrepreneur, sometimes you end up being both. Quote, when I got to the end of my degree, I realized it wasn't for me. I had that entrepreneurial streak and that repetitive part of learning was not inspiring enough. You've done a lot of really good research. That's very accurate. There's sometimes a light bulb goes off in your mind and it just says, hey, this is who I really am. And this is what I really want to do. And that was to try and be an entrepreneur. At what age did the entrepreneurial path become irresistible? So my first time I knew I had an entrepreneurial streak was when I was 13. And a friend of mine and I, we, we wanted to make money because we wanted to be able to buy, I wanted a pair of billabongs. We thought, well, if I'm gonna buy a pair of billabongs, then I need to earn money. And a friend of mine and I set up our own first little business at 13. We then went and asked shops if they wanted their windows clean. And we were entrepreneurs because what we did is we said, if we wash your windows, if you don't like what we did, we'll do it for free. But if you like what we did, you could maybe pay us for what you think it was worth. And some people didn't pay us. Maybe we didn't do a good enough job and it made us better. And other people paid us $2 or $3 or someone really generous might pay us $5. And so within a couple of weeks, I had a pair of billabongs and I went, wow, this works. What happens sometimes is things around and people around us um, maybe give us, um, well, take away some of our confidence of that creativity. But actually inside all of us, it's potentially there. At what age do you feel that your entrepreneurial spirit, which must have been quite powerful, actually overcame the obstacles to break free, enabling you to then follow your dream? I look back sometimes and I even scare myself that how I thought of something and I was so confident but when I look back at how I made those decisions, sometimes I was a little bit lucky as well as making a good decision. If I look over a longer period of time, actually luck follows brave people. So people who go and, and challenge themselves and push themselves. When I look at um, the decision that I made to work in the business, then buy my own franchises and then take dominoes to other parts of the world, they were quite brave decisions when I look back on them. Can you share with us from how you went from delivering pizzas to becoming CEO of Domino's Pizza Enterprises? I think good things happen to people who do a lot of good things. People say, the business is so big now, how do I get to get to the top? We believe in the results that you get. That's what's really important. It's not how many hours you do in a day. It's more about what did you actually achieve? And people who achieve a lot start rising to the top. What advice would you offer to all the young children out there to encourage them to start their dream? Definitely follow your dreams. Don't, don't let people tell you that your dreams are not the dreams that you should have. You should take advice. You are who you are, not what other people want you to be. Um, the second thing to that is that whatever happens in your life, you're gonna have to work hard at it. It doesn't, nothing just is just given that easily. Good things come from working hard. When you do something, you know, be working at it with, with a passion. Second thing is, and I mentioned it earlier, things will go wrong and don't blame others. Take responsibility for when things go wrong. If you were part of that decision, own it, learn from it. And then the third one is surround yourself with good people because it's the people around you that will help you in life and you will also help them. So it's really important how you select your friends. It's really important how you select the people that are helping you in your dream. It's really, really important. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today and sharing your journey, inspirational journey thus far. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming and unearthing this for all the young people that are going to watch this. I think telling stories is often a good roadmap for somebody. You don't know which story is going to light somebody up, but that's what's, that's what's helped me in my life is that I've watched people and followed their stories and they've been very inspiring to me and become a little bit of a, a roadmap for my life. Thank you and well done.
My name is Isabella, come on the adventure. Join a revolution, kids only, yeah! Is that why you've got a marble? No, I definitely I pour paint out, I get on the step ladder. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Mrs. Nicola Forrest, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me. That's my pleasure. I was delighted to hear from you, Isabella. Not only you and your husband, Mr. Andrew Forrest, overcome unbelievable challenges to achieve incredible success financially, and that's where most entrepreneurs leave it. When you something happens in your life and you create empathy because there's been a sickness or an illness or something's happened, it makes you understand how much that affects your life and therefore there's many other people that could be affected. And Andrew and I both grew up in the country and I think that is a great upbringing and background to understand complexities of life and death and community. And so we both realised that if we ever had the opportunity, we wanted to be able to give back and help other people. We can all make a difference and it is in the communities that we live in and it's the small things, even being kind or giving someone, looking someone in the eye and saying, are you actually okay? If you describe your childhood as idyllic. I grew up on a farm and we had sheep and wheat and cows and I had horses. So I used to ride my horse every day and ride up to the shearing shed and help my father muster the cattle. And What did you dream to become when you were around my age? I used to think that I would work with animals because I just loved animals and I, I thought for a while that I might like to be a vet and um, but I also liked my father always had an office and he had this big old typewriter and I used to love going and hitting the old keys and writing letters and pretending that I was working in an office and I don't know really where that came from but I used to like pretending that I was managing in an office so I had a mixture I didn't really know when I was little, I used to want to be a vet, but then I kept changing my mind to some. Then I want to be a marine biologist, and then I think I found what I wanted to be. But you know what? It keeps changing, and that's okay. I think as you learn more things, you think, oh, I could want to do that. And the more you know, the more you learn, the more you realise there's so much more out there. And that's it's exciting, actually. What advice would you offer to all the children out there to encourage them to start their dream? I think the really important thing is you've got to follow what you like. You have to learn to know what inspires you or excites you and makes you happy. And if you can pursue that and follow that, then that will take you on a journey. And there's many different ways. And I think the other really important thing is to find mentors who are working in that place that you want to go and study from, learn from them, even if it's online or reading books. And I actually saw a speech on Matthew McConaughey and his speech was about the fact that for him, who was his mentor? Who was it that he, that he wanted to look up to in 10 years? And he said he wanted it to be himself in 10 years. So he wanted to be the best person he could be for himself. Having started, what would you advise in terms of them dealing with the hardships they need to overcome to reach success for whatever their dream may be? From what I've learned in my life and what I've observed, I think we all learn more when things don't go the way we hope they do. I'm a great planner, I've always been a planner, and you can plan and think you know everything, and when things don't go the way you want them, that's when you have to, you, you get taken aback, and you actually learn more from that than it just going along the way you want. And then look and reassess and try again, and never give up. We hear so much about the uncertainty of what the jobs of the future are going to be with robotics and AI. Creativity and innovation, that comes from the human brain and the human psyche, not from computers. So we can put creativity into computers, but they rely on us to continue to change that. So I think there's going to be, I hope, there's going to be another age of enlightenment and maybe another renaissance of more art and more creativity. You have three children, Grace, Sophia and Sydney. In what ways do they inspire you in your journey? The thing that inspires me most is that they actually have empathy. They actually think about other people and they think about the lens of how someone might feel or be affected by a situation. And I think that's a really powerful tool because if you can think for other people, then you're gonna make much better decisions than just thinking for yourself. How do you prepare them for the fast changing world that they're going to inherit? We can only 
teach from, from our own experiences and I think that's a scary thing for all parents because the world is changing so quickly. We only, we know things from our lens. But I think preparing any of us for the future and the fast pace is being true to ourselves and having integrity and always doing what you say you're going to do and always telling the truth. You are so inspirational and I believe your story will inspire many young change makers to follow their dreams. The first change makers that I'm seeing are my own children. Your generation have got the great advantage that you have access to technology and information and you're empowered to be able to make decisions. I think Andrew has particularly inspired me in that he's not, he's not afraid of anything. <laughs> and most of all, not afraid of being criticised. You know, if you believe in something, and you've got evidence to back it up, it's great to be able to follow that and try and make a difference. And I think that does inspire people. Inherent in the Mindaroo Foundation is the fact that a thriving, healthy community needs to have a creative hub to it. And people need to be able to tell their stories. And an artistic flavour, whether it's theatre or painting or videos, gives people the opportunity to share their stories and create empathy from other people. And so I think across the different areas that we work with in Mindoro, we try and share those stories, stories of people and stories of courage and creativity. So I think that helps, it helps inspire the people that we work with and it also helps to inspire and bring others along on the journey. Mrs Nicola Forrest, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the fantastic life-changing work that your family is doing. Oh, thank you very much, Isabella. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me today. Absolute pleasure, Isabella. You're an Australian chef and also a very well-known celebrity chef on a variety of TV cooking shows, including My Restaurant Rules, The Chopping Block, Master Chef, Paddock to Plate and The Great Australian Bake Off. That's a few shows, isn't it? You were born in Tamworth, New South Wales, yes. Australia and are a fourth generation farmer. Can we start by going back to your early life and the kind of childhood that you enjoyed? I was born in Tamworth on a sheep farm. I had an older brother who's a year older, so he was my best mate. Um, then we had a dairy farm and we used to have milk farts. And having a milk fart on a dairy farm is very different to what you would think it would be. It's like grab your own cow and you squeeze the teat and you squirt each other with milk from the cow. <laughs> True story. I'm a big believer in, and I'll tell you why I'm very lucky, Isabella, because I didn't really know what I wanted to do until I started working. And I just wanted to leave school and I became a cook or a chef. And, uh, and you know what, I've never worked a day in my life. You know why? Because I love what I do and I don't classify it as work. You would hate to go to work every day going, I don't like what I do. So I think it's really important. So I think you always encourage people to uh, do what they want to do in life. And I think if you want it bad enough, you'll always get there. Strangely enough, and you probably don't know this one because I don't think I've ever said it before, but when I got into cooking and I was doing my apprenticeship, I used to top the college every year. First or second, I think, nearly every time. Can you share with us how you became an apprentice chef at 15 to what you have achieved to date? Um, I, I was very lucky. I got a job at one of the best restaurants in Sydney called La Belle Helene after about 20 interviews. Um, and I worked there and then I I went and worked in another restaurant after five years, which was one of the best restaurants. And then I decided that I didn't want to work for anyone anymore, so I bought my own restaurant when I was 22 with my partner, Pete. He said, I just thought to myself, if it fails, I can just go start again, yep. give it a crack. Do you still agree with that statement? <laughs> um, you know, I was very young, didn't care. Um, I cared, of course, I wanted to succeed, but you know, I always thought, you know, we'll see how we go and if it doesn't work, you know. At what moment did you realise that your dream would be related to food? Um, not until I really started cooking um, at La Belle Helene. And the reason being is, is because I came from a very basic food background and working at La Belle Helene, I saw 
what they could do with all this food. And it really blew my mind. I thought it was amazing that, um, that you know, I, I, I just fell in love with it. You know, not just eating it, but I fell in love with creating it. How did that change your life from that moment on? I went into it because I, I wanted to leave school, but then when I fell in love with it, um, I didn't really have any expectations of owning my own restaurant or anything like that. I just did it because I really enjoyed it. And then I think all the other things just came with what I was doing. So, you know, because I loved it so much, I bought a restaurant. I thought, wow, I never thought I'd own a restaurant. Never thought I'd be on TV. Never thought I'd write a cookbook. Never thought I'd own multiple restaurants. But that just sort of snowballed. I don't know where it all went wrong or went right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it went right. What have been the greatest challenges along the way to you developing your dream to the level you have? There's been lots of challenges in life. You know, when I was opened my first restaurant, I didn't really understand um, how to run a business, but I knew how to cook, so I had to learn how to run a business. And I surrounded myself with really good people and people that know how to do it probably better than I did back in those days. You've achieved incredible success in your chosen field. Have the sacrifices that you've had to make been worthwhile? Absolutely. You know, I worked very hard when I was 15 and very young, and I think you work hard and work, you know, when you're young, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to do. What advice would you offer to children to encourage and enable them to follow their dreams? Do it because you love doing it and don't do it for any other reason. Someone wants you to do it or you think you're going to be famous, you know, it doesn't work. It's too damn hard. Do it because you love it and uh, things come easy, a lot easier to you. How important has it been having good mentors along the way? It's been so important to have good mentors along the way because they're the ones that you look up to and you, you respect and you, you listen to when you need advice. My first chef was a great mentor to me and I, I'd asked him for advice and, and then I met a, a good business person that I asked them for advice and, and I became friends with them. And you know, I still have people that are, are no relation to me that I catch up with every six months and we have a lunch and I, I ask them for advice. I think it's really important that you, you want to learn, you've got to, you've, got to, you've got to ask questions. I really appreciate you taking the time to share your experience and wisdom with other children who are beginning their journey of following their dreams. Isabella, it was an absolute pleasure. In fact, I've got a little present for you, which I'm just going to grab now. And that's my latest cookbook and I've written in it for you. And you can take that home. And, uh, and I, I just noticed a tattoo on your arm. And I'm pretty sure I know what that is. That's a thankful for farmers tattoo, isn't it? Uh, that is fantastic. We look after our farmers, don't we? I thought very carefully about which one of my paintings to give, me, give to you, having researched Matt Moran. Mm. That is incredible. Now, where did it come from, did you say? Isabel, you, you did this. Wow. Wow. There's, there's two kitchens. There's one, uh, there's one downstairs. And the and and cooking, eh? She just interviewed, she interviewed me. How long have you been working here? Oh, 18 years. 18 years. Yes. He's, yeah. a, he's our head pastry chef. And have you noticed, Andy can't. He's reading my lips, he's deaf. I can't hear you. You have to talk and you understand. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Anything doable. Anything doable. Anything doable. So true. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Um, lovely to meet you. Can I have a kiss? Yep. Yeah. Find a hug. Oh, good.